Okay, my name is Lionel Brosh. I work in uh, MRI. So I'm not a designer, I'm not a programmer. I'm actually sort of a guy who designs a device and make it work and tries to actually get the whole things together. Um, I'm working on a new type of MRI device, uh, something that sees new kind of contrast and can be explored for, for, for medical uh, applications, and I want to make it open sourced. Now, uh, MRI is not something you can build in your garage. It's some complex kind of equipment, as you can guess. It requires a lot of skills and so on. So making things like this open source is quite a challenge. And what I want to try and then make is something like an open source hardware repository, something you could install on your computer. You would actually may be able to browse projects online. If you find something that is interesting for you, you download the file, you have all the blueprints, all the steps needed to actually make the device, all the skills needed, all the documentation and so on. And then you just follow step by step. So basically, the code is the blueprints and the compiler is yourself or whatever tools you use to actually make the device. And when the device is built, you have a virtual environment on your computer that actually can track what the device does and so on. So that would actually be quite nice to develop these kind of ideas, but I'm not a designer. I'm not a programmer. So what I would like to have is some help from a designer or programmer to give some inputs about how this could actually look like, not make it at, the, at this stage, but to have some realistic view of how this could look like technically so that I can apply for grants and get actually someone hired to do the job. So if anyone here would be happy to have a discussion, or a chat tonight or on the beer or whatever, I'm happy to, to talk. I leave my uh, email address on the board so you can contact me. Thank you. The entire thing. So basically, uh, would, what we've done in Aberdeen so far has been to assemble pieces that were built by suppliers because it's so difficult to get you know, uh, power gradients and, and magnet and so on. These guys in open source initiative are actually uh, trying to regroup all their initiatives around open source hardware that are relevant to MRI. They managed to get the whole system actually uh, from the magnet to the gradients to the coils to whatever. So the, the, all the pieces are there for a bare bone scanner at least. So we need a bit more, but. Um, and what we've done in, in Aberdeen is, well, integrating all that, getting the software to work, getting the images, making the patient studies, uh, validating, doing the research on how, how we can actually use it, what, what information it gives that could be useful for clinicians liaising with uh, the hospital over there. That's what we've done over there, yes. So a, a bit of, well, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah, so again, having someone to help with uh, the other parts, so all the, the technical thing would be great. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to help or to be part, that would that'd be great. Okay. That's, that's Thank you. <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe time for someone else. You're welcome.
ice cream? Um, should I put he this or? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So hi, uh, I'm an, I'm Sofia. I'm from the UBA team, and the rest of the team is there. <laughs> uh, I want to explain a little bit the problem we are facing in order to understand the project. So um, we are facing well, we all are facing like mankind is facing these two problems: no uh, surveillance capitalism and the loss of control of our data. Uh, so we wanted to regain this uh, data uh, and this owner data ownership, and we decided to build a platform to escape from the corporate consumer cloud. So to do so, what is Juvia? No, the, the, the our project. Juvia is a physical device that everyone will have, that the, the, everyone that they want will have in their house, and. Uh, you can have there yeah, a storage, email, contacts, calendar, or any kind of app, app that you can download from a decentralized marketplace. So we wanted uh, uh, you can ac access to the device from uh, anywhere through a secure connection uh, via Tor. And the intention is uh, that everything is open, transparent, auditable, um, easy to, to use. So this is the tricky part the, that connects with the design. Uh, in order to have some something that is very is easy to use by anyone, like our parents or grandparents, uh, we need to make a big effort in design. So we have to develop a design system. We have also to develop the user interface and the user experience. Uh, these are part of the work that we are now doing. And we also have to develop the hardware case appearance. So that's, that are the three fields in design that we are working on and that we need help and your collaboration if you want. Uh, we have received uh, a funding from the Next Generation Internet Initiative, that is an initiative from the European Commission. Uh, we are open to uh, short-term or long-term collaborations, so anything that uh, we are open to talk. Um, in fact, I'm curious if anyone uh, has worked with um, like industrial design or anything like that. No? Okay. <laughs> And ah, hi. <laughs> so if you want, we we can talk about it. And I think that's all. Thank you. And we have stickers. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> so is is there software already created? Is is, is there a version people can? Kind of yes, try we have. Developing something in order to test with uh, users. So to get the advanced part, because usually we are service designers, uh -huh. and before to start the project, mm -hmm. uh, the first part of the project mm -hmm. is exploration. You know, first uh, is like um, idea, ideation, mm -hmm. so, uh, understanding the problem, uh, see how people uh, uh, see the problem, and uh, understand 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, there you go. Uh, doo, 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 doo. There you go. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so while Philip is is getting his things um, together, uh, don't forget if you're going to the picture project, you can post the job on the. As well, just to sort of like, you know, concise what it does, what you're looking for, and then contact details. We might have some sort of questions over and back with you, but that's just So, uh, my name is Philip Durbin. I come from Harvard University, and I just gave a lightning talk about our project at two o'clock. So you should be able to find the recording there. Um, but I thought I'd at least mention here, uh, I'll tell a quick story about Dataverse that I told at the open source design table, which is that we did a big rewrite of our software about five years ago or so, and it, it came about because we had a usability study done on the previous generation of our software. So it was called DDM3. We basically uh, had some students from Simmons College in Boston come and like, look at the software and give us a report. And it came back negative. Like, <laughs> your software is unusable, unfortunately. Which led directly to us saying, okay, well, we need to let, it was like a, like a come to Jesus moment. <laughs> like, we need to really decide what are we going to do. And so we did a big rewrite with a folk, we hired a usability person and uh, really focused on usability for the, the current generation of the software. And now what we're seeing is, I mean, this is not a direct line, right? But um, if we look at our installations, uh, we now have 52 installations around the world, six continents. And I'm not trying to say it's because exactly of the usability study, but I really think that the emphasis on usability has helped a ton. Um, so uh, I guess I'm just trying to spread the word that like tell, encourage projects to like ha bring in usability people to study the current state of affairs and like, see if you can get some traction that way. Um, I, how much time do I have? Let's Should I wrap up? Another Should I minute and a half to this. If I have one minute. <laughs> oh, even less. Oh, great. I, I, I have a totally unrelated project. I, I'm a dad. I have a 13 year old daughter and a 10 year old daughter. And um, I thought I'd show one other quick open source project that another dad and I have been hacking on. Are you looking for input in some way? Well, I don't know. We could use a logo. Right, right now, the 10 year old is doing the, the artwork using an open source tool called Piscal. So she made this little bee and she's doing other stuff. But I just thought I'd just sort of spread like the word about this idea anyway. Um, and, and the idea is that uh, if you have a 13 year old like me, like, like these kids are all on their phones, you know, they're not, you know, they, um, we would like to get them more engaged in the community. And, and they're trying to raise money for their class trip and to go see the Boston Red Sox baseball team go go play baseball and, and they want to go on a cruise in the harbor as part of the school uh, fundraising effort. And so we thought, well, what if we put these kids to work? What if they put down the phone 
uh, and they could shovel snow because we get a lot of snow in Boston, or or they could walk dogs, or uh, do cat sitting, that kind of thing. So we, my, a friend of mine and I built this thing, mostly him, uh, called Helper Bees. And the idea is that if you're a member of our community, it's kind of a hyper-local thing. And you're like, well, I need a dog walker. You, you, you click on dog walking. And then the idea is that the, the parent or the neighbor is donating 10 bucks and getting two dog walks from these 13-year-olds. So it's just a way to like give the kids opportunities to like do a little something and then connect people. So it, it's worked out pretty well for, for my daughter, where you know it's sort of introducing her to the world of work a little bit, where uh, she was hired to be a party helper, and she was like, "Oh, what do I wear?" You know, so it's kind of just get her thinking about that thing. So this is all on GitHub, also this uh, helper bees thing. I just thought I'd spread the word. So, thank you. Okay. and the idea, but hearing about this pitch talk, let's say, let's give it a try. Okay, so what do I have in mind is a bit more challenging to the system. Uh, I don't know if you, can you raise a hand if you're familiar with cryptocurrencies? Okay, okay, so this is a good crowd. Okay, now the problem in cryptocurrency is mostly the entry and exit from fiat to cryptocurrencies, and usually this is solved for now by exchanges by third-party exchanges which operate and facilitate you in your interaction and your bid execution on their platform. The problem is that those third party are allowed to censor you, they reserve the right to disallow you to execute transaction and even seize funds. Now my solution to this is to design and conceive uh, unbanked cryptocurrency ATM. Uh, this is a bit challenging because the current uh, existing ATM, you have the ATM which is calling an API to an exchange executing the trade according to what was custom, the customer doing. But here you have the risk that you as an operator, you have to take the cash from the machine, go to the bank, deposit the cash, then wire the money to exchange. Uh, here there are two third parties which uh, could seize your money. First is the bank who can simply close your account and say we don't accept your funds. Secondly, there is the exchange which, which could ask, okay, how did you get the funds and all the AML and KIC procedures, which is inconvenient for people who want just to use the technology. So there's like a bottleneck to, to access this technology due to relying, still relying on the third party. So my idea is to build the descent, not decentralized, but I think misusing the word, uh, unbanked uh, cryptocurrency ATM where the price would be determined locally by a local offer and demand, and uh, people would speculate uh, on the local transaction, on the local demand. So the filling and the emptying of, of the ATM wouldn't be uh, the responsibility of the operator. The operator would have to maintain only technically like repair parts, uh, replace touchscreen or something like that. Now this is a very old, broad overview of the idea. Now, in order to launch such a project, I still have a lot of questions which I don't have to ask. This is a for-profit oriented project, so uh, I'm not willing to invest funds to pay people to come to work, to employ people, but I'm more willing to find a model to reward the early contributors and the early participants in the project. And there are a lot of things to settle. A lot of areas of expertise are intersected in this project. For example, I would mean uh, first the government structures, like uh, the reward, the contribution, and the whole model of the project. Uh, then there is building the entire project, which is what computer, what operating system, what designing the case, uh, designing the user interface. There's a big load of work. Uh, I have already some people involved from the community, which more particularly the Monero one, uh, who are interested and 
contribute with an idea to this project, but due to personal situation, I'm kind of stuck. So if you're interested, maybe to participate in some, something like this, well, I'll drop my contact details here. Any questions, thoughts? effective would be to use a bank as an exchange but when you're censored by those these, those institution cost is not really a reason besides this you as an operator you have multiple the way I view the terminal would be able to have three sources of monetization first uh, maybe internet access people this can be promoted as an internet terminal people just browse the internet and pay either with crypto either with fiat uh, it can be used as an ad platform, like uh, companies present ads on the terminal, so people who are visiting, passing by, or they give ac they pay for free access to their website on the terminal. And the third uh, is practically the cryptocurrency exchange, where the operator would get a fee from each transaction, from each exchange. And yes, now it's supposed to, I suppose to conceive a model to split the <coughs> revenue be between developers and contributors and people who are working to the project and operators. Quick question, which country do you prefer? Which, which Worldwide. It's an open source project, which the idea is yeah, anyone can buy, build a computer, a tar screen and the bill acceptor, and they build their own machines. That's, that's my idea. So I don't want to target a particular country. I don't have a problem with the rules. What rules? Is it, is it legal to uh, use Is it illegal? You're starting on the premises that something must be uh, specifically legal in order to do it. So where's the... <laughs> why? why? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to... Uh, if you want to continue... Uh, no, 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 no. Very interesting no, discussion, no, no. which I don't know... <laughs> I, I just wondered if you, if you thought of this. Uh, I'm going to thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, where the gentleman is. <laughs> if you want to continue, that's that's wonderful. Uh, but I'm going to move on to the next um, okay. project, just because we're yeah. running out of time. No, you're running out of the of the camera. The camera's recording there and just standing here. Yes, <laughs> the gentleman preferred to stand off okay. camera. Uh, that's totally fine. Uh, microphone is okay. Okay. Where is the battery? Okay. Yeah. Stick it in your pocket. Yeah. Excellent. This one is a bit. Super. Cool. Hey, hello. So I'm Tom. I work on Ethersync. It's essentially end-to-end -end encrypt and sync your contacts, calendars, and tasks. I know it's a mouthful. Think something like iCloud or Nextcloud or Gmail account. Oh, Google account, sorry. But encrypted in a way that the service provider, for example, Apple, cannot access your data. Um, so, for example, WhatsApp has end-to-end -end encryption, so it encrypts your data in that way, if I'm not clear. Um, so how does it work at the moment? So it's, it's been around for three years now. It's uh, an old project, or ish, young-ish. Um, you just, on Android, for example, you just install the app and then you just start using it as if it's a normal Google account. So you continue using the calendar app that you love and the contacts app that you love and all of that just remains the same. So that sounds as if there's not a lot of UI. And you'd be right that in, on Android there isn't a lot. But the UX and UI issue here is the onboarding because I had to explain it to you in 20 seconds or however long. And I think a lot of users bounce at that stage. And I know from feedback that a lot of users install it, start use, like open the app, and they're like, wait, I can't add calendars. Yeah, you can't, yeah, ca sorry, calendar events. And the reason is, of course, because you sh should use your normal calendaring app. But I think the onboarding, I'm missing something in the way of nudging. So I, th I thought, for example, about adding a button that lets you add an event, but then when you click it, it actually says, no, you should use your normal app. That would be a solution. But I think the problem is that all of the onboarding flow is not really, I don't know, pushing people the right way, at least on Android. Are there, we have a web client where we actually control the, the UI and it's really ugly. But that's, I think that's less of a concern. I mean, I want to fix that, but it's less of a concern as much as the onboarding, which is really poor across all platforms. So this is something I would love to get help. Uh, 
Yeah. And also we are funded by, um, I mean supported, not really funded, by NGI Zero, Enelnet. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Um, they just had a meetup, so we partly supported by them. Yeah, so okay. cool. So it's a, it's a transport for end-to-end -end encrypted uh, contacts. You have a contact or a calendar event mm. on your phone. It goes to wherever it's going to go to, but it's encrypted there. So yeah, yes, but in, in in addition to that, it's not just a trans transport, it also just stores it. So think exactly like iCloud. Yeah. So if you lose your phone, you can just install it again and everything you can download back as long as you have the encryption password. That's, by the way, another thing. If you lose your encryption password, you cannot access your data. And that's another thing when you, we, we kind of like need a part of the onboarding or maybe a bit later, I don't know, like five days in to kind of have a way to make sure that they know it and they have a backup of something. I don't know, it's a lot of challenges essentially of bringing encryption to like wide adoption. Um, yeah. I have some idea there since I see that happening also with, uh, with all the bitcoins and all these things. With, uh, with apps on your phone that, uh, that initially re uh, requires you to re-enter these uh, private keys or numbers or maybe only the phrase of that or the start of the thing. So, so they force you to copy it so you no, have to... Copy basically, so that is not, that is not the whole deal is there, of course not done, but uh, it's more like writing it down. Yeah, yeah I meant copy as in... Right, yeah, and yeah. You need to re-enter it basically. Uh, yeah. Or you need to know all the numbers out of your head. The last yeah. thing you would then force to write it down somewhere. Right? That's actually a really smart idea. Is um, Yeah, I mean, but that's exactly the kind of help I need. Yeah. So those kind of ideas and ki that kind of like workflow that solves those issues. And I'm going to do that, I think. <laughs> like, uh, it really, you know, it's, it's really smart. And that's actually the amount of users that reach out to me like, hey, I know you can't help me recover the data because I lost the thing, but can you help me reset the account? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, so. So, and the information is stored on anything. So everything is open source. You can self-host if you want, but we also offer on a hosted solution for two dollar, two yeah, two, two US a month. Um, so it's not a lot for the West, I think. And we also, by the way, do fair pricing. So if you're like in India or other low-income country, we you know we slash the price fifty percent or whatever. Okay. So do you have many users currently, or are so free? because it's open source. I mean, it, the, the paid one we have in the thousands. Open source. You know, you, you look at the downloads or like of the Docker image and all of that. It can be anything between zero and twenty thousand more. I have no idea, yeah, but yeah. I mean, just guess completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, and also it's packaged by distros, so I don't know how many downloads there are there. Like, it's really difficult to estimate. Sure, sure, yeah. Sure. Okay. Is there yeah. any particular place that people can go to? I don't know. Yeah. Forum. That's a good good point. That is a good point. Uh, yeah. So just etasync dot com, um, but that's more. So the moment the moment the the company, like the hosting, is kind of in indistinguishable, indistinguishable from the open source project. I mean, it's the same website. Okay, the internet is not working. Yeah, I mean, whatever, I've had it all day, like internet is really yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So oh. etasync.com, etasync like this, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, and .com, yeah. Oh, and I have stickers as well, actually. I have more, if, yeah, I should put more. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. That, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I mean, we have, we have an IRC channel. You can connect uh, for Matrix. Um, we don't have a mailing list, but what else we have? We have a few other things. No, and also, by the way, I'm really, it's not that like, I think it's a good idea to do those things. I've done some of them, and I see the, you know, the, the, the ramp up. Like, so many more users stay. Or, for example, I added one of those um, intercom-like, but ours is open source based on uh, XMPP, blah, 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 blah. But then, yeah, the moment you add that, people actually ask you questions and they retain more. So it's all of those small things that you think, like, it's not going to matter. I need to code more. And then, you're, like, you do that, and like, oh, my God, <laughs> spike. So I really know the value of it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not going to be one of those kind of, like, oh, leave me alone uh, kind of communities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super. Cool. was really interesting. And no, cool. And use it. Yeah, use it, by the way, even if you're not interested in helping. <laughs> yeah. Great, uh, thank you. Cool. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Down the back. Super. So, did you hear the sort of initial? Yes, I was here. Excellent. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Istvan, and I'm actually pitching for a friend um, who couldn't make it um, here. He's roaming around, stuck in another talk. Um, the main thing is so what he created is a um, 
library for collaborative editing, so for Google Docs like um, thing, and it's really stable now, and it's used by a lot of users, and I myself am a heavy user, but what it's completely missing is awareness. So uh, making um, people aware that other people are using it. So it, it, sca it's, it scales to dozens of users, but it's really hard to uh, follow what is happening. For example, there is a, um, an example here. Um, so you can type um, text well here. Um, and uh, what we need is some kind of a design system for awareness that goes beyond those basic ideas that Google Docs has, for example, the, the colorful animals on the top or the, the cursors, because um, it supports a lot of data types and things, for example, drawing. And already here, um, the usual awareness thing, so awareness is that you see that others are, what others are doing, are not working here. And we really, really need ideas how we can, you know, get the information to the user that some, something happened here made by another user. So that would be awesome if, um, yeah, we could get some help on that. There is um, information on, on yjs.dev, and there's a, a Gitter, there's a Discuss, and uh, GitHub issues with contacts. So, just to get a, a realistic idea, if I wanted to join that hmm? and collaborate with you, how would I do that? Just go on the website, yjs.dev, yeah. and then scroll down, it works on mobile, and uh, then click the drawing tab and start drawing, and then you see somebody's drawing, but you don't see uh, who is drawing. Are you drawing right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm drawing, what I'm drawing. Are you in the same uh, Wi-Fi now than this uh, laptop? No. Yeah, but the, the, the text should work. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's so. You saw that? So this magically appeared, but we don't know who did it. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So you want some sort of, let's say. Um, yeah, some ideas, some, some, some design system that, that everybody can just use. And um, yeah. So we are ready to implement it, but we need ideas. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so you, have, you can uh, introduce uh, legends left uh, down or something with colors and then change the colors accordingly. So mm -hmm. Also with the text, you can use the same colors, name the text to the left corner with the label, mm -hmm. like a legend. Okay. So. Oh, so, so a, lo a lot of people yeah, uh, joined that. Sorry. Basically, you, you generate automatically a new color depending mm -hmm. on when a new user joins. Yeah. Yes, you can draw with different colors yourself. Um, but is that wanted? Is that needed? Excuse me? Is it needed? In sense well, it this, is, this is just a demo, so um, no, you I can... can the either, right? mm. yeah, yeah, but even if... Um, a lot of uh, people are working on Google, so if we're collaborating and even 10 people are working on it at the same time, it's really hard to, y you need to, to look at the document to see who has changed what. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It's all in JavaScript, yeah. Thank you. So how do we get in contact with you? Um, basically on yjs.dev. It's I can't see it here, right? So yjs.dev, D-E-V. And there's a, there's a discuss link. GitHub, uh, uh, very active. Uh, GitHub. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very cool. much. Thank you. So just to remind everybody, Please don't forget to post the job to opensourcedesign.net slash jobs um, because that's 
where it would move outside of this 20 odd people to more people. Okay, anybody else before we, yeah? We've got, we're a little bit over, but do we have anybody else who's interested? Maybe one more? If not, that's, that's quite okay. One more quick one, okay. Any questions? 